In the spring of 2009, the last five caribou in Banff National Park were killed by an avalanche. They are no longer found in PEI, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, or the eastern United States. Caribou are a keystone species that indicate the health of our boreal forests, and they are culturally important to First Nations and Canadians in general. But today, they no longer occur in Whiteshell Provincial Park or elsewhere south of the Winnipeg River, because across North America, caribou range has retracted northward and entire herds are disappearing. This has caused a flurry of research among scientists to understand the reasons behind such a widespread decline. Monitoring populations for parameters such as birth rate, age of mortality, calf and adult survival is imperative to understanding how and why these animals are vanishing from our landscapes. The most common population monitoring tools include aerial surveys and radio collars. But these techniques are extremely costly and they may cause harm and stress to the animal. Consequently, a great deal of effort has been invested in non-invasive research using fecal pellets to gather information on caribou. Yes, we are talking about poop. <laughs> fecal pellets are coated with a sheath of epithelial cells, the cells that line the rectum, and are rich in DNA. Simply by examining the animal's feces, we can identify unique individuals, gender, ancestral lineage, pregnancy, and so much more. We can forensically monitor animals over their lifetime, within years and between years, all while never having to come into contact with the animal. The key here is non-invasive. When a species is in decline, we want to make every effort to understand and monitor populations, but not at the expense of the animal. With this method, we can construct pedigrees and map out a herd's entire family tree to understand its social structure, otherwise known as sociogenetics. In my research, I'll explore the sociogenetics of two caribou populations, one in Jasper National Park and one right here in central Manitoba. I will also measure the size and reproductive hormone levels of fecal pellets to determine an age class for individuals. From my results, I can distinguish between calf, yearling, and adult animals. I can examine the reproductive output of both males and females, and even determine the influence of inbreeding. Studying caribou across landscapes at such a fine scale will help us understand what main drivers are behind these population declines and the effectiveness of different management actions. And yes, we can learn all of this by looking at one little pellet. Canada supports the largest distribution of caribou in the entire world, and my research is one important, unexplored avenue to understanding how we can make the story of caribou conservation a successful one. Thank you.